All right, so here we are at the 6.1 roll quest, the culmination of all the previous Endwalker roll quests. Now, it took me a little while to do those, so I'm hoping this one is worth it, but uh, let's check it out. Bitter Snow. The glint in Surabit's eye suggests she was hoping you might pass through. Well, if it isn't Gaddis, all around good egg and champion of, well, the whole world, I suppose. Word travels fast, my friend. We've heard all about your exploits uh, defeating the blasphemies that plagued the good people of Eorzea and Doma. Sadly, there are other fell beasts that yet want for slaying, but fear not. Our efforts to bring them low uh, proceed apace. We've had naught but glad tidings from our allies. In fact, we recently received word from the resistance forces in Bozja that a blasphemy was slain thanks in no small part to Lord Hian's timely assistance. Also, oh, Hian's all the way over in Bozja now? Perhaps the most surprising report came from Werelit, where soldiers led by the infamous Black Wolf fought alongside Alamegan troops for yet another hard-earned victory. Reports from Garlemald, however, suggest another blasphemy threat lurks in the snows, and we received a petition for assistance. Hmm, okay. Strange, don't you think? When the effects of the final days began to spread in earnest, we encountered a great many monsters in Garlemald, but never a blasphemy. Wait, what are you talking about? We were finding tons of <laughs> blasphemies. Is it, is it just like she didn't remember seeing those many monsters on the snowfields? And to make matters worse, they say the Garleans who chose to remain and rebuild have begun transforming into yet more hideous creatures. From what I understand, it was you and your comrades who brought an end to the source of the final days, is that right? You got that right. Even so, it would appear its effects will linger a little while longer. Oh, are they going to actually talk about why the hell blasphemies are still around? Because I know that's something I had kind of asked, <laughs> I had tossed out into the ether and asked uh, when I finished one of the previous role quests. Until this malevolent influence on a Akasha subsides, I dare say this won't be the last time we hear of such sightings. As for the blasphemy, we have reason to believe it is a great deal stronger than any, we any we've faced thus far. Your strength and experience would prove quite valuable if you're willing to help, of course. Uh, why, of course, of course I'll help. Is the Ilsebar contingent not equipped to handle this threat? I mean, that's a valid question, because, I mean, <laughs> I'm just supposed to handle all kinds of stuff in Garlemald. You can't expect me to just pop out every time someone's like, ah, blasphemy. Uh, yeah, let's ask that. I should certainly think so. No sooner did we receive the request from Charlian than they began making preparations to dispatch the forces. That said, it was clear from the first they were hoping it might also take up the hunt. Though, if I may be frank, I was not expecting Charlian of all places to be so concerned with the present state of Garlemald, but with their strict policies of non-intervention. Perhaps we'll find out the reason before this is all over. Or well, maybe my actions made them start rethinking their policies? But that's an inquiry for another time. I'll not keep you any longer. Once you arrive in Garlemald, I should think the intelligence officer stationed there will be more than happy to apprise you of the situation. The intelligence officer. Gaddis. The Gaddis. It's an honor to have you with us, sir. I presume you're, you've are you come to assist us in our hunt for the blasphemy? Mm-hmm. Maxima and Lucia will be pleased to hear it. I if you would come this way. Now, is this going to be voice acted? It's probably not. It is good to see you, Gaddis, though I wish it were under more fortuitous circumstances. We were reluctant to call upon you, knowing you but recently just returned from the far reaches of the heavens. But we are no less glad for your aid. Now then, I believe it best if the man who first discovered this blasphemy explain the situation. Is it somebody we know? I know those shoes anywhere. <laughs> ah, Gaddis, good. We may forego introductions then. Thank you for answering our call for assistance. 
As for the situation at hand, it concerns a joint effort between the Forum and the Loperitz to find a new purpose for the Moon. While there is no longer need for a vessel to evacuate the star, we believe the Moon may yet prove of use to the people of Aetherius. That's not a bad idea. After much contemplation, a rather ingenious proposal was put forward to transform the Moon into a repository for man's knowledge, an archive hitherto unseen scale. Charlayan has long uh, had the honor of boasting uh, incomparable repositories of the world's knowledge, but it is far from perfect. Should calamity befall us, natural or otherwise, the wisdom of ages we have long labored to preserve would be lost. But the moon is beyond any such risk. What's more, it is beyond jurisdiction of any one nation. Uh, true, but... Do you not also find that potentially a little problematic? <laughs> I mean, down the line, for now it's fine, right? But down the line, being neutral like that, I feel like it's going to bite us in the ass, but okay, Fortional. Thus did we consult the allied nations of Eorzea, the Far East, and Radzat Han. They agreed to assembling a survey team to take measure of the moon and its potential as a repository. I mean, it's fucking huge, <laughs> and the Loperids can make whatever you want, so I would think it'd be a pretty prime candidate. Our plans for assessment were forestalled, however, by the presence of an entity we believed to be a blasphemy in the Tower of Babel. Oh, so we didn't clean that thing out, I guess. Claims of Garlean citizens transforming into monsters shortly after its discovery only gave further credence to our initial supposition. But we've not only ill tidings to share, reinforcements have been dispatched to aid us in quelling the blasphemy threat. Lord Atorel and a member Oh, we're getting some Ishgardians in here. Oh cool. Uh, and a member of Gridania's Keepers of the Entwined Serpents have already Oh god, is this this isn't Kane Sena, is it? Have already begun an investigation into the catalyst of these transformations. Though the skies no longer burn, and the spread of this affliction is much curtailed, we must remain vigilant. Until the blasphemy threat has been quelled you guys like saying quelled <laughs> this time around. Alphano and Alze have graciously offered to help keep calm the people of Tertium while we attend to the people here. Alright. But the matter of the blasphemy is not so easily resolved, I'm afraid. We recently met with certain complications that have hindered our plans. Yuguri and Fordola are presently deliberating how best to resolve the situation. Perhaps it would be best if you heard the details directly from them. Oh wow, so they really are grabbing pretty much everybody we interacted with from the previous roll quests. That's very uh, thorough. Alright, let's see my two besties, or amongst my besties. I should like to join you, if I may. As this endeavor was originally undertaken on Charlian's behalf, I feel it is my responsibility to see this through to its conclusion. Okay, just don't be a... Uh, take the stick out of your ass first. <laughs> So this is a really interesting melding of peoples that we've come across up to this point. Hey guys! I did not expect to see you here of all places, but I am no less glad for your presence. I presume word of the blasphemy is what brought you here. In which case, I believe it may be best if a member of the reconnaissance team's guard explain the situation. Oh, why did the music stop? <laughs> What does this mean? Oh, oh my god, it's you. Uh, an acquaintance of yours? You could say that. Long time no see, Lawrence. It's not actually that long, because I did uh, I did that role quest last. Um, aren't you the captain of the Company of Heroes? I mean... Uh, I'd like to out him a little bit, so let's do this one. Aren't you the captain of the Company of Heroes? Who, me? Heavens no. Just a lowly sword for hire. Open to fatten my purse with a touch of mercenary work after taking my leave from Limsa. I reckon you'd sooner find Miss Beard's treasure than the Company of Heroes captain. And neither have reason to make themselves known, lad. Oh, oh. <laughs> and then music swap. But you didn't come all this way to hear about me, did you? The blasphemy we're after is making its nest in the upper reaches of the Tower of Babel. The auxiliary sector, I believe it was. 
And it wasn't alone. A sizable horde of beasts were circling around like knights protecting their queen. Naturally, we thought to strike from a distance before engaging in earnest, but not a single bullet reached its mark. They were protected by some manner of mystical shroud, as far as I could figure. Without a keen eye for magic, I don't see anyone getting through. By the time we understood the futility of the situation, we'd been spotted. Retreat was our only option. Pains me to say it, but there won't be any brute force in our way through this one. My understanding was that, once transformed, these blasphemies are completely devoid of ether. With what energies could it create such a barrier? That's the question, isn't it? My first thought was uh, to some heretofore unknown technique for conjuring shields. Needless to say, I'm out of my depth when it comes to matters of magic. Which is precisely why I plan to speak with the Elder Seedseer when she arrives. If anyone can help us find a way to overcome the Blasphemy's protection, it's her. In the meantime, could we trouble you to help with the not-so-small matter of people changing into beasts? The Blasphemy's horde was large enough when we first found it. We can't afford to, for more to join its ranks. Very well. We shall reconvene with Lord Artorel and discuss strategy. Uh, before you go, there's something else you should know about the tower. From the moment we set foot inside, I could swear there was someone or something watching us. I shrugged it off, thinking it a figment of my imagination, but in hindsight, I'm not so sure. So some creepy thing watching you guys. Nothing to worry ourselves about now, but uh, best keep your guard when we do finally return to the tower, eh? At least it's not an Asian. Hey, Arturel. Oh, it's the Keeper guy, not uh, Kane Sena. Okay. Under normal circumstances, I would never dream of leading, leaving the Elder Seeds here aside, but considering the nature of these blasphemies and the calamity they bring, she insisted a representative for Gridania would precede her arrival. That makes sense. It would appear their investigation into the recent reports of refugees transforming is well underway. Ah, goddess, it is good to have you with us, my friend. Indeed, the road before us is not an easy one, and a man of your talents will prove invaluable to our efforts. We but recently returned from reconnaissance, wherein we made a few rather surprising discoveries. First and foremost, we are pleased to discover that no one residing within Camp Broken Glass or Tertium have turned. No doubt thanks to the concerted efforts of Maxima, Alphano, and Alizé. However, we have reason to believe that those who did turn all hail from Locus Amonis. Uh-oh. You mean Corvos, the Garlean's ancestral home? Are we gonna fucking go there? The very same. When the ill effects of the final days began to manifest there, a number of Garlean refugees from the region sought sanctuary in Gollumold. But the capital was already in ruins when they arrived. They were offered asylum, but many refused and said chose to fend for themselves in the outskirts of the city. Mm -mm. We are of a mind to go and speak with them directly, if you would care to join us. Perhaps together we can learn what of their recent circumstances has triggered sh such terrible change among their people. Hmm. Somehow I don't think we're going to get to go there just in a roll quest. I hope we could, though. Pros and hope. Artoel is e eager to begin his inquiry. Time being of the essence, I believe it prudent we split into two groups and cover as much ground as we may, as quickly as possible. Oh god, who's going to tag along with me? Artoel, please? <laughs> you want to come with me? Ah, fuck. <laughs> If you and Master Portional would inquire after the people at Victor's Spoils, the two of us shall see what we may learn at Liminal Station 4. When you're finished, pray meet us there. Oh, I gotta go with the stick-up-his-butt guy. Ah, oh, maybe he's okay now. He's not worried about his kids anymore. You wanna loosen up a little bit? <laughs> Victor's Spoils is to the east of here, yes? Let us be off. Okay. All business.
That they should choose to reside here in the cold, I can but presume they will not be amenable to conversation. Even so, we must not be deterred. Come. Well, with that sterling personality, I'm sure they'll be just so eager to talk to us. All right, guys. Here's the savior. Just want to ask some questions. Talk. What is there to talk about? We've no home, no future, nothing. This doom spells the end for us all. Well, the doom is over, right? Okay. Come to hear our grievances, have you? Hm. We've more than you have time to hear them, I'm sure. We've lost not one, but two homes. Our loved ones, our livelihood. There's nothing left. I served my time with the military eye. For what? To lose all my friends? My son? And there was not to show for it, but our claim to Locus Amonis. Or so we thought. Calamity was visited upon us for reasons we know not. And when we thought to flee... It followed on our heels to Garlemald. Ruin and ash at every turn. I can't imagine why you or anyone else would feign interest on our troubles, but if you insist. You'll find a great many of the people here were in the military at one time or another. Some retiring with honors, others without. Sadly, I'm one of the latter. Bore one too many scars in battle. Even so, my contributions were enough to warrant leave to move to Locus Amonis. It was a land of warmth and bounty. The Corvoisi of Rebellion, admittedly, proved quite troublesome for a time. But it didn't take long for the Second Legion to quell their uprising. You could practically drown in the calm and quiet. Uh, are these people that just wanted their land back, or... It, this feels like it's from the point of view of, like, Quintus or one of those people again. It's like, oh, those savages causing us problems, when it's like, no, were you causing the problems? <laughs> could you not work together? Oh, well. And then one day the skies came alive with flame. We were overrun by all manner of foul beasts born of our brothers and sisters. The Second Legion barely had time to assemble their forces before they were overrun and snuffed out. We barely escaped with our lives. But we were greeted with only more rack and ruin on our arrival here. And we have not the strength to take our home back from the Corvosi a second time. There's nothing left for us anywhere. Well, maybe you need to find new homes. Did you learn aught of how they came to be in such dire straits? Yeah, they tried to reinvade a place and they were kicked out, kind of? I see. I heard much of the same. The military forces of Locus Amonis were defeated in the wake of the final days. Desperate to survive, they naturally fled to Garlemald seeking sanctuary. It was their hope the might of the Empire would allow them to reclaim the home they were forced to abandon. But the capital was already in ruin when they arrived. Needless to say, the lands they have long believed to be in the ancestral home of the Garlean people may remain forever lost to them. Those unfamiliar with history would believe that they have always resided in the bitter cold climes of northern Ilsebard. But that was only after the Corvosi invaded 800 years prior. With the advent of Magitek, I imagine it was all too easy for Emperor Solus to rally his people and take back what they believed to be rightfully theirs. Ah, yes. Altered history. Yet history would tell us true, that the land they called Locus Amonis has been known by other names, and served as home to myriad peoples. Indeed, one need, need look only to the Allegan's reign in the Third Astral Era at, to give lie to the Garlean claims of sovereignty. And even had they such ancestral ties to Locus Amonis, antecedents cannot justify their animosity to foreign peoples. Animosity poorly veiled by delusions of justice, as has been the case for so many nations throughout history. Would that man had the sense and strength of will to break free from such chains of hatred? Well, you know, what do they say? Hi hindsight's 50-50? Like, it's easy... It's easy to say that now, or to say that when you haven't been in that situation, but we're, I understand when you're in the midst of it, it's, it's not an easy task. But he's not wrong, because really, they should have moved past it at this point, but uh, if you're not careful, everyone's going to backslide back into what they were just doing before. Help! Someone help! They've, they've turned! Another monster! Quickly, Gaddis, we have a moment to lose. Uh oh. Well, 
one of my mates seemed unwell, so I thought to come over and look in on him. Uh-oh, was it the other dude that was around the corner? Oh, shit. Uh, GG. <laughs> Next thing I knew, he... He... No one appears to be injured. Did he not attack? He just walked off in the direction of the tower, in a daze as if it was calling to him. Oh, shit, so that... Well, no, but we killed... Uh, Varus is, or we killed Anima, so what the hell is still calling out? He could not have gone far. If you would go after him, I will remain here and see that all are accounted for. Unless part of Anima still lives? I mean, he did have that really gross under section of himself. <laughs> Maybe that thing survived his, his like, talking ass. <laughs> Wait, what are you? Oh, that's hideous. All right, sorry. I gotta Ockmorn you. Yeah, rest in peace. Okay. Got bad news, Fortional. The beast is slain then, thank the heavens. For a blessing no others have turned, and a measure of calm has been restored, if only for the moment. Witnesses were able to offer a clue as to the source of the transformation. They claimed the afflicted was listening to this radio. Even now it continues to play the same cryptic message. Well then fucking turn off all the radios. <laughs> Why would you have it on if it's just looping the same song anyway? Empire. No more. Never again. Rise ashes. Oh, so this is a different message. This isn't the one that fucked up like Eulis and those guys before. Though distorted by radio static, you can hear a voice saying the Empire is no more. Never again shall it rise from the ashes. I mean, I kind of gathered that. <laughs> but how is this possible? There are no facilities left standing that could possibly deliver a broadcast. Well, whoever that sneaky person is in the tower... <laughs> Um, Anima was capable of sending such a message. Yes, but I killed him. The last time this happened, the signal came from the Tower of Babel. Yes, and that would line up with Lauren saying that he saw or heard somebody there. Be that as it may, Anima is no more, and the Tower of Babel has fallen into disrepair, by your hand no less. Which begs the question, who, or perhaps what, could be behind this? Gaddis. Master Fortunal, a moment, if you would. Oh, Emmerich. And Merlewib. Shortly after we finished our inquiry at Liminal Station 4, Lord Emmerich and Admiral Merlewib arrived and requested an audience. Hey, guys. Apologies for our late arrival. Knowing firsthand the devastation of which blasphemies are capable, I discussed the matter with the Admiral, and we are of one mind that the situation warranted our immediate presence. Is it safe to presume a representative of the survey team has already arrived? Indeed I have. Thank you for coming all this way on such short notice. Wait, have they met each other before? I don't know if Fortunal has officially met these two. Recent events here at the camp have proved most enlightening. I, like, I know people came to Charlian towards the end of the final days to help out, but I don't remember Emmerich or Merwa being there, so maybe this is a new introduction for them. And this is the aforementioned radio? Empire no more. Never again rise ashes. Wait, so how can they hear it and not get turned? A harsh reminder of their misfortune. Sufficient to push some wayward few over the edge, it would seem. Yet there still remains the question of who is sending this message and from where. So it's not like the same thing as Anima where it actually tempers you or whatever. It's just a thing that makes them remember that their life sucks. <laughs> like, couldn't anybody? It doesn't have to be a radio, right? It could just be anybody reminding them like, hey, uh, we got to rise from the ashes. Uh, we're in dire straits, etc., etc. Glory everlasting Garlemald. For glory everlasting for Garlemald. No, it couldn't be. Oh yeah, because the Keeper was an ex-Garlean. 
You recognize this message? A mantra often spoken by Lord Nerva. Anyone who lived in the provinces under his authority could scarcely forget those words. So is Nerva blasphemy? Like Anima 2.0? He sought to claim the throne after the assassination of Emperor Varus, did he not? After civil war broke out, he all but disappeared according to the intelligence we managed to gather. How could he have managed to breach the tower undetected? To have done so and remain unnoticed by the creatures infesting the tower seems a nigh impossible task, unless... <laughs> unless he was one of the creatures and I just let him in. Um... Do you think the voice on the radio is Nerva? I mean, I'm pretty sure that's what everybody thinks. Do you think the voice on the radio is the blasphemy? That's probably more accurate. I do. And as it was with Anima, these radios are somehow attuned to whatever signal it emits from the tower. What's more, I believe the true identity of the blasphemy is Nerva, robbed of the throne and forced to watch the empire he longed to command crumble before his very eyes. If such loss did not drive him to the same fate as Quintus, the despair he felt no doubt overcame and turned him. Have we ever seen what Nervous looks like? He's been mentioned a bunch. But I don't think we've actually seen... I mean, I guess we don't get to see him now, because if he's already a blasphemy, he doesn't look like he used to, but... I wonder what he looks like. Nerva's delusions of grandeur aside, the Garlean's plight sounds not unlike the Sahagan, desperate to preserve their spawning grounds. Indeed, though unscrupulous by any measure, the Garlean's found solidarity in their ideology, as did the people of Ishgard in the church, adrift without home or purpose, it is all too easy for despair to take hold. Ah, actually, it's good you're here, Emmerich. That's a very applicable line of reasoning. Would that a remedy were as simple as offering them land as we did the Sahagan. In all likelihood, the Garleans would refuse to settle for aught less than what they believed to be their ancestral homeland of Locus Amonis, a claim the Corvosi would readily take arms to denounce. We would do well not to further fan the flames of animosity twixt them then perhaps at the very least we can offer them peace of mind and a means to regain some semblance of stability in their lives. I don't know if that's enough for them. To offer them true comfort and stability, Garlemald must be rebuilt. D Wait, only two? I mean, that's a given. I can't be like, I don't know, <laughs> because that's not accurate. Yeah, Garlemald needs to be rebuilt, but maybe not as, you know, fascist land. By no means an easy solution, but perhaps the only one worthy of pursuit. Of course, this new Garlemald must remain a sovereign nation, free from the oversight of others. Yeah. Aye, they would see no meaning in it otherwise. If I'm not mistaken, Alphano and Alizé have already made strides in helping the people here regain some normalcy in their day-to-day -day living. A most important first step, but it will mean little without proper leadership. Who are they going to- I mean, Eulis is the only, like, named person right now, really. Would he be the leader? He's kind of young. Rather than a single individual, perhaps a governing body of sorts would prove most effective. Oh, like an Ishgard, just make a new democracy. <laughs> Easy as pie. <laughs> There are a number of former Senate members amongst the refugees at Camp Broken Glass, as I recall. With their help, creating the framework for a new governance is not an impossibility. Then let us call the people together and see what they make of our proposal. Yeah, you need some Garleans in your group when you propose this, otherwise they probably won't listen to you. That one Ellis and Garlean standing in the back. <laughs> He's so much taller than the other ones, too. The final days have taken much from you all. I can but imagine the pain you feel in the faces of such immeasurable loss. And though the final days have been averted, its effects yet linger, and a blasphemy has been born of your suffering, decisive action must be taken before further harm is wrought upon you. To overcome such adversity is too great a risk for any one person. But as a people united, there may be 
there may yet be hope for the morrow. While it is not our place to decide how you will move forward, we would offer a small measure of guidance. I don't know if they'll like that. We were told a number of former members of your Senate yet remain among you. Would you be amenable to an interim government led by these individuals until such time as Garlemald can be rebuilt? I mean, unless they are suspicious that you might be controlling these Senate members, but uh, decent plan. Rebuild Garlemald? Is such a thing truly possible? Hmm. Even if we do cobble together some governing council, they won't be making anything of that pile of ash we dare call Garlemald. There's no going back to Locus Amonis either. Rack and ruin, those are our only options. Well, don't start saying that. You're going to turn in front of everybody. I realize to build Garlemald is a seemingly impossible task, but you needn't undertake it alone. Oh, is Charlie actually going to help? My children are working with members of the First Legion as we speak to begin an organized relief effort. And there are others from the provinces, no doubt willing to lend their expertise. Ah, he's so proud of his twins. Just has to like plug them a little bit going like, hey, uh, elbow, elbow. Uh, my kids are pretty great and they're helping you out, so. You need but ask, not as would-be conquerors, but as brothers and sisters of this star. And others will heed your call. If you should still see no merit in the rebuilding of Garlemald, then I would instead offer you residency in Charlian. I promise you will be welcomed with open arms. Oof, that is quite the promise. But they would not want to do that. They're not scholars. Charlian! Now you'd expect us to go and lick boots in some country you've never even heard of? Oh... Uh, my apologies if I appeared overly forward in my proposition. Considering our strict policies on non-intervention until but recently, it is not surprising that you are unfamiliar with my homeland. It is an island nation to the north, home to myriad peoples, which is why I believe it would not prove difficult to accommodate you and yours. To be clear, you would not be migrating to Charlene to live in servitude, you have my word that each and every one of you would be guaranteed citizenship upon entry. What? We don't want to read books. <laughs> we don't want to go to a nation with books. <laughs> and why exactly would you go to such lengths for us? For the conquerors you barely know? Charlian was long aware of the coming doom that would be the final days. And so we were preparing to evacuate this star taking as many people and resources as our stores would allow. Initially, it was our intent to save the people of Garlemald as well. But we had not forgotten your transgressions invading Alamigo, your rejection of our entreaties for peace. After a great deal of deliberation, it was decided we would forego an invitation to Garlemald, a determination made with great trepidation. Wow, why would you admit that now? <laughs> That's going to make them want to go there even less. What the fuck? Unless they go there secretly just to try to, like, kill people that they, you know, want vengeance on. Oh, wait, there's there's another Ellis and Garlean. What the hell? Okay, so there's two Ellis and Garleans, and then everyone else is here. That's a big nose on that guy. We had convinced ourselves it was ultimately for the greater good, though I can think of at least one individual who would continue to protest. To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. Ah, you finally quoted your pops. At least you learned. Sage counsel I brazenly cast aside when confronted with the final days in earnest. But Gaddis here and his companions refused to forsake those we were otherwise unwilling to save. With great risk to themselves, they achieved the impossible and opened my eyes to the error of the form's decision. A 
If all other roads lead to ruin regardless, perhaps we should at least consider it. Good. Then it would be my pleasure to invite you all to Camp Broken Glass, where you shall have warm food and beds both. All right. Let's see how many of you come along. Oh, three of you don't like it. Oh, or you grudgingly accept it. Watch them turn into blasphemies. <laughs> Admiral Merlweb and I shall speak with Maxim and the others, and consider how best to assist the Garleans moving forward. Should we broach the subject of the blasphemy, however, we will not hesitate to call upon you. Sure. Uh-oh. Who is this person around the corner, goddammit? Wait. Those are very familiar-looking shoes? Was that Nero? <laughs> Misguided few. Though visibly relieved the Garleans are safe, the hardness in Fortunalt's eyes suggests your work is far from over. Uh-oh. With the Garleans' hearts at ease, the likelihood of others turning has greatly diminished. That said, it is no cause for us to grow complacent. We must needs find a way to overcome the blasphemy's protective warding. If I understand correctly, a blasphemy's behavior is oftentimes influenced by the memories and emotions of their originator. In which case, it would be prudent to learn more of the man who birthed this monstrosity. How fortuitous, then, that a number of soldiers from the Third Legion are in our custody. For a mercy, their tempering was not so severe as to be beyond our ability to heal them. They are presently being treated at Camp Broken Glass. Perhaps the camp's intelligence officer can tell us um, uh, among them who knows aught of Nerva's whereabouts. Huh. I see. Perhaps it'd be best if you speak with Virgilia, Legatus of the Third Legion. She's still on the mend, but the Chirurgians aren't like to oppose a brief conversation. If you would wait here a moment. Virgilia? Was she the one with the lance, like the gun lance that we fought? I thought we killed her. Oh, okay, she's still alive. Although she might not be happy about it. <laughs> Eorzea's champion, I presume, and one of his cohorts. Oh, she's just in a pissy mood, I guess. What business have you with me? Ilsebard is faced with imminent crisis, and we believe the knowledge you bear may be key in stopping it. Thus we do believe the blasphemy to be Nerva. His whereabouts in the wake of Garlemald's fall, or lack thereof, give credence to our theory. Lord Nerva. From what we have pieced together thus far, you were one of the last to see him alive. Please, will you not share with us what you know? Very well. Though I suspect what meager knowledge I possess shall avail you not. I last spoke with Lord Nerva shortly after the warring with the First Legion began. Cloistered within the lower levels of the Centacalum Imperialis, he spent the better part of the day listening attentively to the radio. He seemed hopeful, or perhaps desperate, for news that the tide might turn in our favor. The next day I left for the front line. It was there I heard a terrible noise, which I assume came from the Tower of Babel. Then darkness took me, and I remember not after that. 
I was told the radios protected those close to them from the effects of the tower, in which case Lord Nerva would have remained unaffected. But he has ever been devoted to Garlemald, for glory everlasting, he would say. To watch the empire he loves so dearly crumble, I can think of no one who would be more stricken by the sight. It would assume we were right to assume what became of Nerva. And it does not surprise me the beast would choose to make its nest within the Tower of Babel. It stands atop the remains of the Imperial Palace and the throne he revered so highly. But the Empire is no more, and Lord Nerva, apparently, is no longer the man he once was. He deserves to be laid to rest, together with his dreams of glory. We will fell the beast, you have my word. I have nothing to say about that. All right, guys, what have you found out? Apologies for the interruption. Kanae Senna has arrived and we're ready to depart. Tis good to see you, Gaddis, Master Fortional. I have spoken with Lorenz of the reward protecting the blasphemy, and I am quite confident some manner of ether based magic bars our path. What, even though it's a blasphemy? If I may be so bold, Elder Seedseer, we reached the same conclusion initially, but that simply is not possible. These creatures born of the final days are devoid of ether. As such, they would be unable to produce such a barrier in a manner to which we are accustomed. Do you suppose it's possible they manipulated dynamics to achieve a similar effect? I too thought to dismiss the notion of a barrier fueled by ether. That is, until I step foot here in Garlemald. Even now, I can sense streams of ether flowing towards the tower. Its purpose was, after all, to harvest reserves of energy sufficient to reach the moon. Even if one was incapable of manipulating ether directly, it stands to reason control of the tower would alleviate such a need. It is merely conjecture, of course. I cannot say for certain until I have examined the currents with my own eyes. Might I ask you to accompany us? I would join you as well, if I may. My injuries would keep me from being of use in battle, but my knowledge of the land should serve just as well as my blade. I would not be opposed to your company, but it is not my decision to make. She may go, so long as she remains under watch by you and the others. And what is she going to do? <laughs> Very good. Might I suggest we begin with the Regio Urbanisma? I sense the greatest confluence of ether in that vicinity. Okay, that has to be Nero. Who else wears those, like, shoes anymore? <laughs> Those are old, uh, those are old shoe models. As I thought, the ether stream flows towards the tower, as do all others in this region, no doubt. This convergence first began when the Telophroi erected spires in all corners of Eorzea to fuel the Tower of Babel. But once destroyed, this divergence of ether should have ceased. So what's keeping it going? All right, whoever you are. If you've business with us, quit your skulking about in the shadows and speak your peace. Was you there in the tower, wasn't it? Nero, come on out. Yes. Yes, you naughty boy. My, my, you're sharper than you look. 
<laughs> oh, God. I guess Sid let you loose, huh? I recognize you. Nero, yes? Why are you following us? Because he couldn't help researching that goddamn tower. Who said I'm following you? Being a native of Garlemald, does it not stand to reason I might be inclined to come and see what has become of my home? I know not what you're scheming, but we've no time to entertain your games. Perhaps Master Garland would make better company for you. Spare me. I am a man of great ambition and greater intellect. Far beyond the scope of anything Garland could hope to achieve. He still keeps his head in the clouds while I would set my sights to the stars beyond. Which is why you snuck into the tower. But like us, you couldn't get past the blasphemy to reach a transporter. Yes, well, I was very much hoping you would dispense with that little obstacle. And having caught wind of your plans, curiosity compelled me to see if you were truly up to the task. Do you have reason to believe we are not? Or perhaps, does the great genius Nero mean to dispense with the blasphemy himself? Uh-uh. Far be it from me to seal your glory having come all this way. But, as I am feeling generous, I will tell you what I learned during my time in the Tower of Babel. I was able to access its systems, you see, and discovered one of those dreadful spires still appears to be active. Impossible! They all vanished when Anima was destroyed. Yes, and I have heard your escapades reclaiming the remains of the Emperor, but obviously you failed to reclaim his entire bo Oh my god! So is it really his lower half that's just, like, hanging around? I was joking when I said that earlier, but <laughs> his evil ass is giving us problems. As it stands, a piece remains to p powering a tower at Fabrica. Ah, yes, the manufacturing district, just north of the erstwhile Imperial Palace. A rather impressive feat, considering how these lands are so utterly devoid of ether. Barely enough to sustain life, let alone the spire. But if one were to use Varus's remains to forcibly create a confluence of sorts. Precisely. And from what I gleaned of the tower systems, his heart serves as its core. Oh, okay, so it's a piece of his body. It wasn't Anima's piece. All right, so I wasn't really right. Coursing not with blood, but your precious ether. And now Nerva has amassed a surfeit to shore up his defenses. How fortuitous he should find so perfect an impetus for his design, stolen from better minds than his own. How very like him. Oh, did I say that aloud? You'll forgive me if I fail to show concern for your ire. Oh, you little bitch. <laughs> if what you say is true, these lands could never hope to recover from such a paucity of life energies. We must hurry and find Varus's heart, both to spare the land this wanton harvesting, and to deny the blasphemy the source of its protection. Are we to presume you have any intention of aiding us? As I've said, I have no intention of stealing your glory, though I fear victory may soon slip through your fingers if you do not act quickly. The Tower of Babel was designed specifically for Anima to serve as its core. Nerva forcing himself upon the system has caused it to grow increasingly unstable. If my calculations are correct, and they always are, it will not be long before his presence triggers a system meltdown. The resulting explosion will destroy whatever tenuous streams of ether breathe life into the lands of Garlemald. But more importantly, we will lose our only means of reaching the moon. The heavens forever denied my genius. <laughs> How so very unfortunate. In any event, twould seem time is of the essence. That's all well and good, but even if we knew which district to search, finding the heart'll be like looking for a needle in a bloody A stack. Actually, I may know where we can start. It's all rather hazy, but I still have a vague recollection of my time serving Anima when I was enthralled. We were commanded to erect some manner of facility tucked away in a corner of Fabrica. I remember not what it was for, but, to, but it's as good a place as any to begin our search. 
Certainly sounds promising, but surely this facility will be heavily guarded. Then maybe it'd be for the best to divide our forces. If it's just the four of us, shouldn't be proved too difficult to sneak inside and find the heart. Meanwhile, our main force can stand ready to storm the Tower of Babel when the barrier gives out. Leave it to us, be safe. And leave it to us. Can, can you take... Can you take uh, Kane with you? Mm. Uh, okay. This is a year. Some bad news. What? Very well. We shall return at once. Don't tell me another blast on me. A number of Garleans have left camp for the Tower of Babel. Oh, so they're just suicidal. <laughs> okay. Maybe just let them go. <laughs> they have somehow misunderstood the threat of the Tower and convinced themselves that Nerva has taken refuge there. Still clinging to that ill-placed patriotism, no doubt. Man, these guys are slow on the uptake. Holy shit. They could not have gone far. If we act quickly, perhaps they can be found before they come to harm. Let me guess, it's the two Elizans and that girl. Because they were the least, or they were the last to leave. A wise man would not waste his time on a few wayward refugees. I thought you Charlian scholars knew better. To ignore the pl- Oh, now he's just- <laughs> Now he's his first he could not stand his father's quote. Now he's saying it every like other sentence. <laughs> to ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, sir. If it is all the same to you, Gaddis, I would join you. Of course, dude. Yes! Good! <laughs> I will return to camp and pre begin preparations for assault in the tower. I know I sound like such a bitch, but if we can have a cooler person in, the, in this slot than Kane, I, I will take it. I'm sorry, but... Ugh. Alright, you just keep doing your ether stuff over there. Thank you. Uh, and I suppose I should go as well. Yay! Yes, come with us, Nero. You know you want to. Tall people unite. <laughs> All right. Though I am unarmed, I promise not to be a burden. Oh, are you not going to actually, like, fight with us? You're a sage, aren't you? That said, it would behoove us to avoid any undue confrontations, if possible. Now then, let us be off. Oh, no. <sighs> This quest line was going so well, and they just have to do one of these little follow me moments. Okay, where are we going? Okay, it's not that far. Help! Someone, please! Did you hear that? It came from over there! Over where? No, you're disappearing, so I can't follow you. <laughs> Fuck. Despondent refugee. Yep, it's exactly who I thought it was. Alright, we can save them at least. This is good. Oh, fuck. These guys are weak. Alright, refugees, can you just stay put? Stop running away. Stop being jerks. Maybe now that you've been scared a little bit, you'll understand. You... You're the ones who came to speak with us before. We heard Lord Nerva had returned and was assembling his forces in the tower, but... Wait, who told you that? You guys have been gravely mistaken. No! Not Lord Nerva, too! Okay, okay, but process this. Just don't turn it into a blasphemy, please. It's still salvageable. Then there really is nothing left for us. I'll not deny your situation is dire, but you are not without a path forward. 
I believe you've the passion and conviction needed to rebuild Garlemald if you so choose. Or failing that, you could be... <laughs> Stop trying to push the Charlene angle. I don't think they want to live there. <laughs> or failing that, you could begin life anew in Charlene. They don't want that. Rebuild Garlemald? No, there's no point in entertaining so lofty a dream. And we would sooner die than suffer under the rule of another. Well, you guys have painted yourself into a corner. You would sooner seek death than sanctuary? Your resolve is admirable, but sorely misplaced. Just, just get all the people from the firmament. We could, you could have this thing repaired in like a week. <laughs> I mean, they, they worked wonders in Ishgard. If you would not see Garlemald rise from the snow and ashes here in Ilsebard, might you consider venturing into a new frontier? I mean, the world's pretty big. A new frontier. And where exactly is this land ripe for exploration? Oh! Oh! There, on the moon. But do you really want them to be able to control shit on the moon? You know, Garleans who are like, like, video game fascists? Is that wise? It is our goal to create a repository of man's knowledge there, free from the jurisdiction of any nation. As I understand, the Magitech and technological advancements of Garlemald were without peer. Your expertise would be indispensable in the endeavor, should you... But see, that's still needing to share with people. These guys don't seem to want to share or be a part of something. They just want to have their own little independent nation and be left alone. You really expect us to go and live on the bloody moon? Is such a thing even possible? Well, yes, it is, but you also have to like bunnies, because there's a lot of tiny bunnies there. Have you a better alternative? Lest you forget, Garlemald did not rise to grandeur for complacency in the present or rumination in the past. We live for the future. It is in our blood. Life is not without its hardships, of course. Even I have met with the occasional stumbling block. Ah, man, bitch, you bitched and moaned through most of Praetorium. Stumbling block, my ass. <laughs> but even should I stumble, my eyes are forever fixed skyward, seeking even greater heights. The Empire may be lost, but I still possess a great deal of knowledge gained from it and desire to seek more. The very notion of exploring the moon is an unprecedented prospect, and that you would balk at the prop proposition boggles the mind. But see, they're not like scientists. Some of these people are just average people. I don't know if they have that lofty of aspiration. Consider this. You have heard that beasts of the final days were born of those hapless souls that had given up on everything, yes? If that is indeed the case, can you tell me why you still stand before me? Because deep down, you believe your life is yet worth living. Deep down, you long to reach for the unreachable. All right. Motivational speaking is kind of working for you. Or perhaps you don't. If you should choose to lay down and die here in the snow, that's none of my concern. Okay. <laughs> just, just don't say that last part. You were good with the first part. Reach for the unreachable? Sounds like something I would have said back at the academy. All right, we'll go. I suppose it's better than dying here in the snow, as you so grimly put it. So three whole garleans on the moon. <laughs> then we must first dispense with the blasphemy that commands the tower. It's hard to believe Lord Nerva of all people could be turned into one of those monsters. Please, you must stop him. Put his soul to rest. Thank you, and sorry for causing all this trouble. Alright, well, at least they didn't turn into blasphemies, so victory, I guess? Thank you for the rousing call to action, but I thought you had no interest in meddling in our affairs. Hmm. Unless you misunderstand, I abhor the idea of my countrymen blindly following nobles they know next to nothing about. 
Besides, it would be a most piteous sight for not a single Garlean to be amongst those venturing to the moon. Who else am I to prevail upon to learn new of new findings up there? You just always have to one-up somebody. Alright, Nero. Uh... I told myself I would not get overly involved, and yet here I am. I think you like it, deep down. Alright, Fortional. Forlorn Glory. Fortional is eager to regroup and make ready for battle. Alright, let's go! From what Nero has told us, time is now a luxury we can ill afford. Let us return to Camp Broken Glass, if only for the moment. The others are no doubt finishing their preparations for battle. I should hope the other's absence means all proceeds apace. Good. You're here. With the recent arrival of reinforcements, our preparations are all but complete. Hey, Raban! Cool! And Hien. You're still not wearing winter clothes, but that's okay. Apologies for our lateness. It seems we're at least in time to help deliver the crushing blow. Yeah, man! Is this going to be an eight-man with NPCs? <laughs> Aye, and if the fates are kind, this will be the last we see of those damnable blasphemies. Commander Aldin, Lord Hien, thank you both for coming. Oh, somebody else coming? Where's Amerik? Yes, yes, of course, understood. Lawrence and the others have reclaimed Varys' heart. Oh, Oh, I thought we were going to do that. I guess they were more effective than I thought. <laughs> the barrier protecting the blasphemy should soon dissipate. Oh, what the fuck? They, they kind of played this up like I assumed we would be doing that ourselves, but it's so unusual to have someone else handle that, like, just automatically behind the scenes. And the time has come at last to storm the Tower of Battle. Admiral Merlewebb and Lord Amrick await our arrival into space. Yay! The two peacekeepers. Let's go. Or peacemakers, rather. Then we should be about it, eh? I suppose this is as good an opportunity as any to keep my hammer from resting over. Oh, you're gonna wear your outfit again? Yeah. So keep it dusted off. I will accompany you as well. As the forum's representative and a member of the survey team, I feel it my responsibility to see this through to the end. All right. Are you sure you wouldn't rather wait here? I didn't take you for the fighting type. Despite appearances, I am no stranger to the battlefield. Indeed, I have seen my fair share traveling the world in service to the forum. Though I may not be the equal of Alphano or Alizé, we shall not find ourselves wanting, I can promise you that much. Alright, let's see what you can do. Although you didn't do anything when we had that big battle against the blasphemies here last time, but uh, maybe you're just saving your strength. When you've all finished your preparations, we shall reconvene at the Enceladi en Enceladium. That is a word. Insuladium? Oh, yep, it's a duty. Cool. So we're gonna have like a ton of people in this thing, unless we all split up. All are present and accounted for. Shall we proceed? Oh, okay. And it's one of those battles that has fucking checkpoints. Okay. Cool. Let's go, boys. Oh, awesome! Everybody's outfitted. I like this matchup. Our objective is simple. Locate and eliminate the blasphemy, Nerva. 
Though the barrier guarding him is no more, a number of beasts will surely block the way at the auxiliary sector. Oh, or are they already doing their thing? Ooh. What the fuck is that? Off to a smashing start, I see. It would seem the tower will reach its limit sooner than I anticipated. If we're to save the transporter, we must hurry and find Nerva now. Fuck yeah, man. Let's get all the strong people. Let's go. <laughs> that hammer is wiggling really weird, though. Holy shit. Why, does it, why was it doing that? We got a pretty OP team. Oh shit, it is! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's an eight man! It should go without saying, but stay in your guard. There was quite the menagerie last time I was here. Or whatever he said. <laughs> I was so distracted by the fact that there's eight of us. Okay, am I leading this thing? Let's go, everybody. Oh, Christ, there's a lot of people. They're up to- they're on to us. They're upon us. Two arms. I can't see because Bahamut's in the way. What I want to know is, at what point do blasphemies stop appearing? Merlweb and I shall hold them off. Press on, my friends. Okay. The path has been revealed! The winds favor us! Okay. Good luck, guys. Wait, I need to run too. Uh... A persistent lot, aren't they? Uh, wait, what do I have next? Down with you! Wait, does that make a mark our tank, or is that Robon? I shall hold the line here. When you see an opening, take it and do not look back. Oh no, so everybody's splitting up. So is it just gonna be like me and Fortune World at the end? All right, God, Amaric, be careful. You don't have a shield. All right, forward, out of our way. You guys, wait for me. Okay, thank you. Oh boy, we're a bunch of uglies. Nerva did, never did make things easy. Let this, let's get this over with. And zoom out a bit so I can see shit. More coming, stay sharp. Oh, wow. Okay. Wait, I can't target this guy yet? No, I can. All these killer horses. Alright, eat some Ockmorn. There's no end to them. Uh-oh. Here. I'll be nice. I'll have to go all the way here. Don't! Oh god! Tian, you piece of shit! They're a little too spread out to be able to get all as a group, which is super annoying. Oh Christ, what is this? Care for their level year? They have their sights set on you. Don't worry, dude, I got you. Yeah, they want to kill the healer first, right? Fuck! I'm not a tank, though, so I can't fucking tank these. Should I have gone Paladin? Okay. Ah. Oh, no. This is not gonna be good, is it? Self-destruct? Fuck! Uh, what are we supposed to do? Kill all these? I will see to the route, but you focus on the large one there. Okay, fine. Very well then, with me, Gaddis. You gonna LB? I can't do it. Oh! Uh, we still need to do more damage to this fucking thing. What was that? Oh. 
Okay, Nero. Iron Nero. <laughs> oh shit, oh, we're gonna die. Go up, goddammit. Okay. Whew. Was that him? Or is that just opening the way for us? Is that the last of them? Oh, it was just the door boss. Wait, what? Okay, that means one of you guys is sticking around, right? Like, I'll handle these, you go on ahead. Of course not. We can't afford for them to impede our advance any further. Commander Alden, let us hold them here. Oh, it, okay. So is it just gonna be me, Nero, and Fortional? Yes. Master Fortune, I'll take the others and go quickly. All right. Hot guy trio, let's go. Understood. See, his hammer's not wiggling now when he's running. Maybe that was a glitch earlier. Yeah, you guys will do fine. Oh. That's nerve. It looks like the fucking boss at the end of the uh, uh, Shadowbringers, the last dungeon. Leave, leave now. Carlemont is mine. Mine! Alright, you're going down, bitch. Eat Phoenix. This ends here, Nerva, for Garlemald, her people, and all who call this star home. Blasphemy or no, I'll not suffer anyone who gets in my way. For glory everlasting, for Garlemald. Yeah, we gotta deprogram the rest of these Garleans. This is definitely a running theme. Uh oh. Death take you? Oh. Is it in here? Okay, good. Am I tanking it? Okay. What does this do? Oh, fuck. No! Hold on, Gaddis! Get me out of this shit! I have you. Oh, that's a much longer rescue kind of timer, I guess. Okay. We must take the offensive. What do you think I've been doing? Oh boy, what the fuck is this? Ah! Jesus, that is a long blast. Okay. Uh... Are you guys stuck in here? Where's the right place to stand? Oh fuck. No, no, no! Oh my god. Apocalypse? Oh, fuck that. Nero, are you- oh, I thought he was standing in it. Aren't you gonna run out of these at a certain point? Uh-oh. What is this? Oh, shit. Get out of here. Oh, okay. Take care of them, bitch. Nice. Uh, behind me quickly, I shall take the brunt of it. Wait, what? What are you gonna... Oh. That's a fancy pants shield. Oh, shit. 
We must drive it back. You got it. Oops, don't stand in it. Gods be good. Hold on, portion ult. God damn this fucking shield, come on. There we go. Can't see a goddamn thing. Oh boy, are you alright? We've come too far to give up now. Don't worry. Then let's put it into this, shall we? Mine. Mine. It ain't yours anymore, bitch. Rest in peace. And hopefully now Ether will restore to the, the environment. This thing will go away. <laughs> no more. Oh! What is that? Oh! What the hell? For glory everlasting indeed. Hey guys, you missed the fun. Wait, where is... okay, she's there. Everyone accounted for. Is it over? Has the danger passed? We should really do a sweep through this whole area just to make sure, but... Uh, by a hair's breadth, perhaps, but yes. I'd say we managed to avoid a fiery ruin. Oh, the happy music. Our path to the moon is open once more. The duty of Charlian has ever been to chart the course of history, not to change it. Thus did we fervently hold to our policies of neutrality and non-intervention. In truth, it was all in service to our plans of exodus. To abandon this star to its ruinous fate. Harsh though it may sound, I still believe it was ultimately for the greater good. Thanks to you and your comrades, however, it was a fate that did not come to pass. Shalion will now find a new way forward. Not merely for the preservation of knowledge, but for the betterment of the star, and all who call it home. Oh. I believe I speak for all of the form when I say it would be an honor and a privilege to work towards such a goal alongside the Allied Nations. Aye, an age of true and everlasting peace is finally within our grasp, and we will seize it together. Oh, so this whole thing was like a fortunal uh, character progression story a little bit. I like that. As much as I would enjoy a riveting conversation with Eorzea's champion, I really must make ready for the moon. Now, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> so was this whole thing for him to just get access to the moon? Probably. "'Tis a relief to know we have no longer a need for battle. Despite my experience, I must, I must confess I am ill-suited to it. The Allied Nation leaders, meanwhile, demonstrated an aptitude for combat far above... far and above what I might expect from diplomatic figures. Yeah, they've been kind of fighting a lot. <laughs> and you, my friend, I see now why you are so well regarded as Eorzea's champion. What? But you've seen me fight before. I thought. Oh, maybe he ran away that time. Anyway, I'm glad. The others have already begun the arduous journey home, but before you go, I would offer a word of thanks to the both of you. If not for your timely assistance, our plans would be forfeit, and the lands of Ilsebard forever defiled by the blasphemy. Please, I have no need for your platitudes. I labor only to further my own ends, nothing more. Are you sure, though? We heard the news. Thank you for everything. With Lord Nerva laid to rest, we have the peace of mind to move on without regret. 
Oh, a little lumper it. Hello. Oh, yeah, they need to make introductions. A living way. There you are. Now, what's this I've been hearing about you cleaning out the Tower of Babel? Are we finally ready to return to the moon? Ah, what fortuitous timing. Allow me to introduce you to Livingway of the Loperitz, moon dweller and overseer of the survey team. Livingway, these good people will be the moon's first residents. I trust you and the other Loperitz will take good care of them. Pleased to meet you? <laughs> residents? Oh no! I mean, oh yes, splendid. After many, many long years of planning and preparation, the moon is absolutely, most definitely ready to accommodate your stay. Oh, good. Glad to hear it, and apologies for the delay. I must first confer with Lorenz and see to our final preparations, but your residence-to-be in the survey team shall be along ere long. Might I trouble you to relay word of our success to Shibrant at Radzat Han? I should think the tidings all the more heartening coming from you. Until next we meet. I wonder if I'll see them on the moon somewhere. Oh, what was that expression? Wait! Oh, yeah! <laughs> You're not leaving the moon! <laughs> well, wait! You're not leaving for the moon without me. Oh, that'll get him nervous. <laughs> ah, Nero, never change. I'm sure he'll have to come back now and then to visit Sid. They're like an old divorce couple or something. So it's true then. The blasphemy in Garlemald has been struck down. They were right to call on you, it seems. And with no other outstanding reports of blasphemy sightings, I dare say you slain the last of them. Perhaps, wait, really the last? Perhaps now we can finally start to put the final days behind us, strange though that may sound. On behalf of my fellow delegates and the Radiant Host, I extend to you our humblest thanks. I hope when next I call on you, it will be under more fortuitous circumstances. Oh, all right. <laughs> 